Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our Florida National Parks introduction meeting. We have joining us today, Brent Dalrymple. I probably said that wrong. Um, he is Perfect. the owner. Okay, great. He is the owner of Sunrise Tours. And we also have Caleb Lawson. He's the operations manager for Sunrise. And uh, Caleb actually developed this entire uh, itinerary. So he's gonna tell us all about it. Um, first of all, I need, need to let everybody know that the broadcast is being recorded, just an FYI. Um, also, on the right-hand side of your screen, probably, it might be somewhere else, but probably on the right-hand side, you're going to see a control panel. There's a little chat box. If you have a question, you can type something into the chat box. And we also have a handout section, so you can uh, look at the uh, Florida Parks registration form and flyer there. Uh, the registration form, you can feel free to download that, fill it out, and send it back to us. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I am going to pass it over to Caleb. Great, uh, Beth, thank you uh, very much. I assume that, uh, Beth, you can hear me okay at the moment? I can. Okay. Yep, and and I'm going to go ahead and turn off Brent and myself and let you talk. Great. Well, uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining us this morning. I look forward to telling you about uh, this Florida National Parks Tour uh, that goes back several years for us. Um, I uh, did uh, originally create the itinerary for this tour. Now, you know, a lot of people uh, in the tour industry go to Key West and go to South Florida and Fort Lauderdale, so that's nothing new. But I do believe that uh, this tour has uh, a unique angle and really focusing on the three national parks uh, in South Florida and uh, putting a premium on those experiences while also giving you the opportunity uh, to do uh, many of the other things popular in South Florida as well. So I am going to uh, show you a little presentation about the tour. And uh, uh, Beth, can you tell me if that, if that looks good, the screen at the moment? It does look good. Um, okay. How about if I turn off your camera and we'll get that to full screen? Does yeah, that, work? that, uh, that works great. I think I can probably do that on this end as well. Okay. How does that look? Yep, that's great. Okay, great. Uh, so um, this tour is called Florida's National Parks and and the departure is March 14th of uh, 2023. And uh, it's a tour that um, was created specifically uh, for Sunrise Tours and has been uh, run uh, several times and improved uh, several times. So it's not the original itinerary because we're always looking for ways to upgrade and improve the experience of our travelers. Um, there's some uh, pictures that have been taken along the tour and I'll go into those uh, in a minute. The first thing I want to do before we go into the day by day is tell you a little bit about some of the prime highlights uh, on this tour. And let's see here. Okay, uh, so some of the highlights that I'm going to be going through on our itinerary. Uh, first of all, you're going to visit all three national parks in Florida. Uh, that includes Biscayne, uh, Dry Tortugas, and Everglades National Park. Uh, many people uh, know about Everglades National Park, but Biscayne and Dry Tortugas are, are hidden gems as well. A lot of people uh, like to try and visit uh, as many national parks as they can, so that's why we feel it's important to visit all three, give you a chance to uh, stamp that National Parks Passport book if you, if you have one and like to do that. Uh, number two, uh, you're going to spend three nights in Key West. Uh, while you're in Key West, you'll have a conch train tour of the island, a harbor site dinner, and a free time to explore the area as well. And Key West is definitely a uh, highlight of this tour. In addition, while you're in Key West, you'll have a full day boat tour out to Fort Jefferson, which is in Dry Tortugas National Park. Uh, Dry Tortugas is made up of several islands. Uh, the largest one is Garden Key, uh, which is home to Fort Jefferson, a Civil War era fort uh, that was used to control the Gulf of Mexico. You'll visit uh, the uh, Everglades National Park, 
including three different experiences, and you'll get up close and personal with one of America's wildest parks. You'll see all the uh, wonderful wildlife that lives there. Of course, you'll do so from a, a safe and comfortable distance, um, but uh, it is an amazing park uh, to explore with lots of great wildlife. And you'll finish the tour with two nights at the historic Riverside Hotel on Las Olas Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, that is the prime location in Fort Lauderdale for restaurants and shopping and free time. And you're gonna get to uh, experience that uh, in full. All right, so what I'd like to do now is just a brief uh, day by day, not gonna tell you every little thing that we've got planned for you on tour, but I do wanna tell you uh, some of the main things to get you excited about potentially going with us on this tour. Uh, day one is arrival day, uh, you'll fly in and uh, we'll have a welcome dinner at one of our favorite local restaurants, Tropical Acres Steakhouse. It's a place we go every time we do this tour and is very highly reviewed. Uh, so you'll have a nice dinner there at Tropical Acres before checking in for an overnight stay in Fort Lauderdale. Our first full day is day two, March 15th. And that day is gonna start with a visit to Biscayne National Park. Now Biscayne is 95% water. Uh, so only a small portion of it is on land. When we visit Biscayne, we'll be greeted by rangers and we'll be uh, given a ranger program that introduces us to the ecosystem and, uh, and really allows us uh, to get to know how special the park is and why it's protected uh, there in, uh, in the Miami area. After our visit to Biscayne, we will travel scenic US Highway 1 all the way to Key West. We'll be driving through the Florida Keys, Key Largo, Marathon Key. We'll have ocean on both sides of us. It'll be a beautiful trip down Highway 1 um, all the way to the end destination where the road ends in Key West. When we get there, uh, there'll be a harborside dinner at Conk Republic Seafood. If you look at the picture on the bottom right hand of the screen, that is a picture of a harborside dinner at Conk Republic. It will be a uh, dinner with local flavor. Of course, when you're in Key West, you have to have an opportunity for some of the local seafood and that'll be uh, an included option uh, while you're down there as well. We'll, we're going to check into the Fairfield and Keys collection for three nights to really be able to get to explore uh, Key West and uh, all there is to do in that beautiful area. On day three, uh, that is the day that we're going to leave from Key West to go out to Dry Tortugas National Park. Here you see a picture of Fort Jefferson and the coral reef that surrounds it. So we'll get up early in the morning and, and board the Yankee Freedom Ferry, which is the large vessel, large stabilized vessel that takes us out into the Gulf of Mexico. It is a 70 mile trip, about a 2.5 hour ferry ride out to Garden Key. Uh, there will be narration uh, aboard the boat to tell you all about the area and all about the fort and the history of the national park. When we arrive on the island, there are many things that you can choose to do or choose not to do. Um, one of the most popular ones is that the guide on the island offers a 20 minute Fort Jefferson overview. overview. Uh, this is gonna tell you about the history of the island, uh, why it was created as a fort out there in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, and also how it was used as a prison. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, no one ever escaped a prison out in the middle of the Gulf. There's also the option for a full guided tour uh, of Fort Jefferson that will go through all the nooks and crannies of the fort. Um, there are stairs uh, on this tour, um, so you can plan accordingly. Uh, also, if you want to get in the water and see the underwater ecosystem, the Yankee Freedom provides snorkeling gear for anyone interested. We have had a few people do that in the past. So if you're really uh, intent on getting in the water, that could be a way to do it. And then you have uh, the day to self-explore and enjoy free time. You can walk anywhere in the fort. There is nowhere off limits. Uh, there are beaches on all sides of the island so you can relax on the beach. Lunch will be provided. Uh, you can always walk back to the boat uh, for lunch and uh, to get out of the sun if you want. If you just want to relax on the boat, it'll be docked there and available to you at all times. Here are some uh, pictures of the day at Dry Tortugas in the upper left-hand corner. You have the Yankee Freedom Ferry. 
That's a, like I said, it's a large uh, stabilized uh, vessel and it is available throughout the day. It does not leave. So you're able to, to sit there in comfort if you choose. On the bottom left, uh, you see the guide uh, giving narration. Actually, it kind of looks like he's, he's performing some sort of a solo there, but he's providing narration uh, during the drive, during the ride over to the island. Uh, interesting note, we like I've mentioned, we've run this tour multiple times, many times, and this gentleman right here has been the guide every single time. He does this day in and day out. He lives his life on that boat, and he goes by the name of Hollywood. Uh, so he does a great job. I would say there's at least a decent chance that we will have him again on this tour. Upper right-hand corner, you see some of the old brick architecture that you'll see on Fort Jefferson. And then uh, the bottom right, uh, one of the resident pelicans that calls the island home. So that's our day at Dry Tortugas. Uh, obviously, we do have to take the ferry back uh, to Key West, and uh, we will arrive back to the island in the evening and go back to the Fairfield Inn. Day four, March 17th. Uh, the first thing that we'll do, we'll take a comp train tour of Key West. This is one of the famous ways to see the island. And there you see a picture of the conch train that will uh, take visitors, take our customers around the island to do a full guided tour of all there is to do. And then it's going to drop us off in downtown Key West, right in the heart of all the prime activities and restaurants. And you'll have uh, leisure time to explore the area and do um, whichever of those things really interests you. Uh, there are so many things to do in Key West, we didn't want to limit people to just uh, doing one. So at your own leisure and your own expense, you'll have the option to uh, visit things like the Truman Little White House, uh, where Truman spent much of his uh, vacation time while he was in office, as well as uh, his retirement. The Ernest Hemingway home, uh, where he lived and acquired much of the inspiration for some of his writings. Uh, the Shipwreck Museum and the Key West Aquarium are all right there, but that's just a small handful of the things to do in Key West. We will also uh, give you time to choose an establishment for lunch. There are so many uh, popular places to eat in downtown Key West, and then we will do dinner in the downtown area. We'll provide that as well. Okay, moving on, uh, on to day five, March 18th. We're going to depart from Key West and head into Everglades National Park. Uh, this uh, will be going to the southern portion of Everglades, and this is the, called the Flamingo area where the Flamingo's Visitor Center is. We'll give you a time to walk around the area, visit the Visitor Center. Like I mentioned, get your National Park passport book stamped if you choose. Uh, there are often uh, manatees uh, in that area by the boat dock. Uh, as well as an osprey nest, crocodiles, a lot of wildlife in that area. Once we get down to the Flamingo area, we're going to go on a private Everglades boat tour. That uh, left picture is of the boat that we'll be riding on. Uh, it is uh, a pontoon style boat that basically fits our group size and no more. Uh, it's a 90 minute boat tour that goes either out into the back country or out on the bay. Um, this far out, we don't know uh, which tour is going to be available to us on that day, but we've done both and both are fantastic. You'll see plenty of wildlife like crocodiles uh, or the Anhinga bird that you see there on the right-hand side. Uh, they do a great job. It's a fully narrated tour. Um, we've also had people see dolphins and, and manatees and other wildlife on those tours. On the way out, of Everglades National Park from Flamingo that day, we're gonna stop at the Anhinga Boardwalk. This is one of my favorite parts of Everglades National Park uh, because you have a chance to go out on foot and really uh, get an up close look at the wildlife from the safe distance of the boardwalk. So uh, there will be alligators and turtles and Anhinga and uh, possibly uh, snakes and, and manatees and other things that you'll be able to walk at your own leisure and see from the boardwalk. You can go out as far as you want or as short as you want and turn around and go back to the bus, but it's a great way to get a look at the Everglades in one of its wildest areas. From the Anhinga boardwalk, we'll continue out of the park and spend the night in Homestead. All right, day six, March 19th. 
Uh, we're going to go to the northern portion of the Everglades on day six and start the day at Everglades Safari Park. This is a private uh, company. It's not actually part of the national park, um, but we're going to do a private airboat tour. There you see a picture of the uh, private airboat that one of our recent groups has done. Uh, they have airboats that seat up to uh, 45 people, and so we can fit the entire group onto one private airboat. That'll go back into the uh, marsh area with another chance to see wildlife. When we get back to uh, their facility, there will be a wildlife demonstration. Now, this is not a show. This is not for entertainment. This is uh, people who handle the wildlife in the area for their own protection and for their own safety and for the public's safety. So they will show you how they handle uh, wildlife when it gets into residences or when they have to rescue it. Uh, so it is very humane to the animals and they're trying to educate the public. There are also uh, animal exhibits at their facility uh, where they have rescued some of the wildlife that's gotten into the public areas. We will uh, provide lunch on this day at Everglades Safari Park before moving on on the same day when we will go back into the National Park to the area known as Shark Valley. And this is actually one of the drier areas uh, of Everglades because it's in the northern portion. There's a visitor center. And then we're gonna take the backcountry tram tour. This is an open air wheeled tram ride through the backcountry roads. And it's another opportunity to see some great wildlife. Two of my favorite pictures that I've had the chance to take uh, on these tours uh, are there uh, from the Shark Valley area. On the left, you have a young Anhinga bird drying its wings after diving for fish. And on the right, you have an alligator family, an alligator mother uh, protecting her young. Uh, because uh, this is a drier area of the Everglades, it's often where alligators dig holes and make dens. So you do have a chance to see some actual alligator families there. It's a wonderful sight to see. After our time in Shark Valley, we're gonna to continue to Fort Lauderdale and check in for two nights at the historic Riverside Hotel on Las Olas Boulevard. The wonderful location there, you see a picture of the Riverside Hotel. Um, it looks small in that picture, but it actually goes back a long way. So it is uh, a large hotel, uh, but it is it does have a great historic feel to it and is in one of the best locations in the area. So the last full day uh, will involve a guided tour of Fort Lauderdale uh, and a visit to the F Fort Lauderdale Historical Society with our local guide. We have a local historian that provides us with a great tour each time we're down there, tells us all about the Spanish settlements and the history of the area and how uh, it's gotten to where it is today as a major vacation hub. After that uh, guided tour and a chance for lunch on your own, there will be free time uh, on world famous Las Olas Boulevard where all the shops and restaurants are, or you have the option to take the water taxi around the city. Fort Lauderdale, because it has so many canals and rivers, uh, does have a water taxi transportation that is narrated. Um, so it's a great chance to get another tour of the area or transport from one location to the other. What I've included here is just a little Google map of the area. Uh, not, uh, you don't need to know all this right now, but I thought it would help show how uh, popular the area is. If you see the yellow, arrow, uh, the yellow arrow on the left side of that map, that's pointing to the Riverside Hotel. And then just on the other side of that yellow arrow, you have uh, a water taxi stop. So you can hop on the water taxi right there and go down the New River and all through the canals of Fort Lauderdale. Or you can go out onto East Las Olas Boulevard and Google Maps did not even have the capability of showing all of the restaurants and shops available in that uh, very uh, popular area for people to come and visit. There's also some museums and uh, art exhibits in the area. Um, you can spend all day there and have plenty to do. So it'll be a fun, fun day with a guided tour in Fort Lauderdale as well as time to explore on your own. And day eight, uh, depending on uh, flight times, of course, we'll wake up and uh, then return home uh, to, uh, to your home area. So that is a day-by-day -day rundown of the Florida National Parks itinerary. 
I'm going to exit out of this and turn my webcam back on now. And uh, Beth, I'll turn it over to you if you have any comments or questions that you would like to uh, add at this time. It looks great. I mean, this is such a unique trip. Uh, Caleb and I were talking about this the other day, and um, one of the things I was so excited about was Dry Tortugas National Park because it's so isolated and not a lot of people get there. So I'm super excited about this trip. I think it's going to be great. One thing that I forgot to mention for those of you that have traveled with us um, and did the Yellowstone tour, Sunrise did that for us. So um, this is the same company. And uh, maybe I'll have Brent jump on here as well. Maybe. <laughs> well, I can't unmute you. Oh, there we go. OK. I think can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can't see you. Um, huh. But I didn't know if any, if you wanted to maybe give a little bit of information about Sunrise for those folks that haven't traveled with you before. I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, no, Sunrise is uh, Sunrise Tours is a business my family started about 30 years ago. We're based in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, but we have uh, happy customers uh, from around the Midwest. Um, and um, this tour, is, as Caleb outlined, this tour is a new tour itinerary that, that he developed a couple of years ago, about uh, three or four years ago. And um, it's been one of our, our most popular new tour creations of the last couple of years. So he was he was being kind of modest there and describing the evolution of this tour. But it's uh, it's been a big hit and the tour reviews on Florida National Parks are outstanding. And as you can imagine, that's a great time of year, March, uh, to head down to South Florida. Um, and the warmth is, is, a, is a wonderful time to visit South Florida. Um, as far as uh, some more information about Sunrise Tours, um, like I said, we've been in business 30 years. Um, we've run hundreds of tour itineraries across the U.S. and Canada and Europe. And uh, we have uh, thousands of uh, happy customers uh, around the country. And we pride ourselves on uh, creative original itineraries. Uh, very attentive tour managers. Um, so when you travel to South Florida, you will be accompanied by a Sunrise professional Sunrise tour manager, as as well as someone from the uh, from the bank, I'm sure. Um, and Beth can Beth can uh, elaborate there. But uh, so you have the personal attentive service of a Sunrise tour manager, uh, as well as all the inclusions. Um, we are, uh, and maybe Beth wants to talk about the inclusions, but we are including transportation to and from. Uh, the Chicago Airport, so we'll pick you up at your convenient lo your uh, convenient uh, pickup location, take you to the airport, fly down to South Florida, and then return you to your convenient pickup at the conclusion of the tour. What um, what other uh, information can I provide, Beth? Yeah, so um, we didn't really review um, the cost. So um, for those of you that have not downloaded the brochure yet. Um, the cost for the trip is $36.99 per person for double occupancy, uh, $48.99 per person for single occupancy, and if you have a triple or a quad occupancy, it's going to be $32.39. Um, there's a $250 deposit required to uh, hold the reservation, and final payment will be due December of 22. Um, and then also the insurance. Um, I believe it's a percentage, correct, Brent? It's eight point. I don't have that in front of me. I apologize. That's, yeah, that's correct. It's it's eight point five percent, and that's uh, provided. That's provided by uh, Travel Guard. Uh, Travel Guard Travel Protection. Yeah. So reservations will open today. 